Hey guys, welcome to Program Artist. On this episode, it's not gonna be a programming episode, we, you won't see any code today. Um, you're, I'm gonna talk a lot today, um, mostly about stuff that bothers me as a programmer. I've decided to start a new playlist to uh, make myself and other programmers much better at coding. Um, and it's gonna be called uh, Clean Code. So this is the first episode of Clean Code. Welcome! I'm gonna be basing some of my videos on the Clean Code book of Robert Martin. You should really read it. It's a very good one. But not only. Um, some of my uh, videos I will base on uh, experiences that I have at work, had at work, with uh, a few years of programming. Uh, hope you learn something. And uh, probably I'm not the best at it as well, so uh, I'll wait for your comments and uh, hopefully they'll uh, make me much better as a programmer. So let's start with the first question. Why, why do we need to, to, to use clean code? Why do we need to write clean code? It's much, much, much easier to write messy, ugly code that sophisticated code, you know? Well, the first reason that I can think of it, after you write the messy code, it's okay, you don't feel uh, guilty, maybe you do, but usually you don't feel guilty, but after a few days, weeks, months, uh, you come to this code, you look at it, and you, you just don't want to go into it, you, you don't want to change anything there, you don't remember what, what it does, why it works, what the hell is this function doing, what is this member for, what, what is the connection of this class, of this... You, you see like lots of stuff that you don't really remember or want to remember and uh, you, you like, you postpone going to that code, like you, you drink more coffee or go talk with, with your friends at work, just do not get inside that ugly messy code. And it's not how it's supposed to be. We write code as a job, but it can be fun too. So why not make some uh, some changes to your code to make it much, much more uh, easy to come to it much later and uh, actually enjoy it. Like uh, looking at the code with a smile and uh, be proud because it's the, it's the code you wrote. I like to look at messy code as a, as a messy strip. So when you're going out and uh, it was raining and uh, there is lots of mud on the street, you need to, to prepare yourself to wear uh, high shoes, uh, not new shoes you just bought, but old ones. When you go out to the street and walk, you, you look around very carefully where you step so you won't get uh, into some deep, deep, deep mud. and. Uh, it will actually ruin your day. When you go to the code, you look around a lot to understand what you're looking at, to make sure you don't ruin anything, and you can get stuck in very, very, very deep mud, and sometimes you won't be able to get out of the mud yourself. You'll need help from other co-workers at your work that know how more have more experience know how to get out of the code, maybe they wrote some of the code, maybe they put some of the mud there, maybe you put some of the mud there. Well, it's not fun. So this was from uh, the programmer pro perspective, but sometimes the bosses, they don't really understand this as well. Why do you need to write clean code? And uh, they don't care. They just want you to build features much faster and uh, they don't understand that maybe right now, at this moment, if you write this ugly code and put it in production, it will actually be a little bit faster than uh, making it uh, less messy, much more clean. But in the long run, and it's actually not so long, yeah, in a few months, you'll probably go back to the feature you wrote and refactor it a little bit, add more little features, and uh, Doing that, when the code is clean, it's much, much more easy and uh, much productive to do it when the code is clean uh, instead of when it's messy. So even from a business perspective, it's, it's, 
costing you less money to write clean code instead of writing messy code, messy fast code. You should really invest your time to write the clean code now instead of getting through the deep mud in the future. Writing a messy code also means much more bugs. So when you put some code in production and it's messy, usually there are bugs that you don't see because of all the mess in the code. Bugs mean much much more uh, time spent on uh, refactoring and changing and maintaining your code instead of adding new features. So it's less fun for you, it's less money from, uh, for, the, uh, for the company you work at. Uh, and bugs usually scare girls, they will usually run. It's of course a joke, but uh, you get the idea. People don't like bugs and they tend to run away from them. It's not fun. Mess brings a lot of bugs. So what is clean code? Well, it's kind of hard to, to show you what clean code is. It's something that uh, very, very depends on the view, on the viewer itself, on the experience of the viewer. There are pretty vague definitions of it. I'll show you some of them and you'll understand what I'm actually talking about when I say it's not very clearly how to write clean code. So Robert Martin himself in the clean code book, he writes um, about writing clean code. Yeah. The bad news is that writing clean code is not like painting a picture. Most of us know when a picture is painted well or badly, but being able to recognize good art from bad ones doesn't mean we know how to paint. So to being able to recognize clean code from dirty code doesn't mean that we know how to write clean code. Well, what he means by that is even if we do see uh, messy code and we understand it's messy, it's, it, it doesn't mean that we, we know how to fix it, how to write the clean code. Bjarn Stromstrup, I hope I say his name correctly, the inventor of C++, he writes I like my code to be elegant and efficient. The logic should be straightforward to make it hard for bugs to hide, the dependencies minimal to ease maintenance, error handling complete according to an art articulated strategy, and performance close to optimal so as not tempt to people to make the code messy with unprincipled optimizations. Clean code does one thing well. The last line is very very important here. It does one thing well. Grady Bush is writing, Clean code is simple and direct. Clean code reads like real written prose. It's like writing a novel and you you know a novel is good. It's like you, you can't stop reading it, but writing a novel is very, very hard. Michael Fathers uh, is writing, I could list all the qualities that I notice in clean code, but there is one over overreaching quality that leads to all of them. Clean code always look like it was written by someone who cares. There is nothing obvious that you can do to make it better. All of the things were thought about by the code's author. And if you try to imagine improvements, you'll, you're led back to where you are, sitting in appreciation of the code someone left for you. Code left by someone who cares deeply about the craft. So when you see clean code, what it says actually is you'll, you're gonna see it and you're gonna understand what it does and even if you try to make it better, to make it prettier, to make it clearer, you'll probably won't be able to do it. One more time, it's very very hard to do it. And I'm gonna finish with uh, Ward Cheningham, the inventor of Wiki. Uh, you know you're working on clean code when each routine you read turns out to be pretty much what you expected. You can call it beautiful code when code almost makes it look like the language was, was made for the problem. So, one key line is actually very important here. It means each routine you'd read turns out to be pretty much what you expected. So you, you're not surprised when you see a call to a method, you're probably gonna guess what it does. And if you don't understand it, it's gonna be messy, okay? So it's one hint of how to see not clean code or when you, when you think of a method that does one thing and you dive into it and uh, look at the code and, uh, so, and you see uh, the method is actually doing one thing, two things more than you thought or uh, 
does even uh, the opposite or something else not even relevant to what you expected. The best metric that I know about clean code and uh, ugly code is uh, actually called what the fuck per minute. And it means uh, when you look at a code and uh, sometimes you read a code and you see something that's not clear and uh, does something else or you even don't understand what it does something sometimes you say it or just think of it the what the fuck what the fuck did i just read what the fuck does this code do what the fuck is this member doing what the fuck is what what the fuck what the fuck what the fuck so the more what the fucks you hear usually it means the code is much much clear uh, messier it doesn't have to be the what the fuck word but it's that feeling that you you're getting something that you didn't expect, something confusing uh, that you need to put your mind to it and uh, think about one line like for half a minute to understand it and uh, scroll up and down the page of the code and look here and there and move to some other uh, page or ask some uh, co-worker of yours to look uh, at, uh, at the code and, and explain it to you. Uh, usually, when you do it, it usually means the code is messy. I don't say when uh, you ask your coworkers or uh, think of something for like half a minute. It's not always meaning the code is messy. Sometimes it can mean that it's something new that you didn't see before and haven't had any experience with it before or just new at work or uh, I don't know some new subject you don't understand a new topic uh, but when it's not the case when you do understand the subject but you still don't understand the code well usually it means the code is messy so how can we write cleaner code well we can reduce the number of what the fucks per minute you are creating while writing the code um, we can write more beautiful code, uh, we can write a clear and understandable code, and we can care about the code we write, yeah? But all of those things, they're, they, you can't measure them, you, it's not something practical that you can do. It's not like, oh yeah, uh, so from uh, now on I'm uh, gonna really really care about every single line and letter of uh, the code that I'm writing and it's gonna be so beautiful, so poetic and so understandable that everyone in the room will read it and will be like oh it's so cute, it's so amazing no, it, it's not really, it doesn't really work like that there are some basic princi principles that I will talk about a little today and uh, some of them I'll talk much more widely in the future episodes. If you're watching this, it means you've got the first thing right. You care. You care about your code, so you're willing to spend your time, your free time, to learn how to do it, how to code better. If you want to write clean code, you should always be open-minded and uh, willing to learn from other people. Uh, usually, people don't think alike they have when they look at the same problem and usually the solution will be a little bit dif different if not a lot so you should really look and talk to people about their code your code and usually if someone says it's unclear trust me it's unclear you should change it some of the basic principles that you can follow is uh, one of them is the boy scout rule what it actually means is uh, like when you go camping and you find a place when you, you're staying, uh, you usually look for clean place, but not always it's available. So you you find a place that's enough for you that maybe it's a little bit dirty, but you camp there for a night or two, I don't know, and uh, you leave mess too. But when you uh, when you're packing, you should really think about cleaning up the mess you left, but not always, you should think about cleaning others' mess. So when you see a messy code, 
on, not even re really messy, but even a little bit. And if you fix it, the next time someone comes and sees it, maybe it's uh, it's still a little bit messy. It'll, it'll clean it up, and eventually. After a few times, the code will be much, much more cleaner. Another good principle is uh, less is more. What I mean by that? Not always when you do more stuff, it's, it's better. Because when you add more stuff, it's making stuff be more complicated and less understandable. So what can be done less? Smaller functions smaller classes, less uh, abstractions, no sophisticated algorithms, less comments. I will talk about what I think about comments uh, probably in a separate video. It's a big topic. You should really do the bare minimum of the task you're doing. Do not overthink it. If you think this task can be done in two, three lines of simple code, do not over sophisticate it. Do not uh, get abstractions of this thing because you think in the future it will be much more amazing and the code will be reusable. The less stuff you have, the less stuff are there to get messy. There are so much more stuff to talk about when talking about clean code. More practical advices, more uh, like philosophical things. I don't really have the time now to do it and they will get bored because it's, it will be a very very long video. So I'll probably take a subject here and there and make a short video about it. So to summarize, what we've seen today is that clean code is very important because when you don't write clean code, it's not fun to come back to it. The companies you work for will lose money in the long term. Doing clean code is not a very easy task to do. There are things that can help you, but it's not very, very precise science. You should really listen to people when they say your code is messy, you should clean it up and uh, you should always learn. In the next episodes I will talk much more deeply about some stuff that you can do to make your code cleaner. Some of them you will agree, some of them not. If you want me to talk about some specific clean code matter, feel free to comment down below. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and watch my other videos in my TypeScript playlist. Thanks again for watching, see you next time on Program Artist!